Hey, John here again. So, it's still winter, and uh, I did this a few months back in the summer there, and of course ran out of time, so I didn't get to this uh, vinyl railing over here yet, and I have a gate over there I have to make, and that's what, uh, I got a little time today, I want to see if I can make a gate, since I have to make one gate, I'm going to try to make uh, two gates there. I don't really need that gate because the backyard's fenced, but, you know, uh, there'll be a way to contain the dogs up here if, if I choose to close the gate, so... Now you could buy that gate for, geez, I think it's a hundred bucks, but all you get is these uprights, right? I don't know if they're wood, vinyl, they must be vinyl. And then these uh, railings, you have to buy another railing panel, and you know, because all gates are not going to be the same size. So you buy these two uprights, it's a hundred dollars. The problem I have with that is they have this, uh, like a bolt, like a threaded bolt with turnbuckles on how you make it square and keep it racked. And they have one on one side and one on the other side kind of creates an axle. I guess you can do them both same side, but whatever. It just looks like ass. Even in the package, I'm like, you know, at first I thought they were just, you know, there to help you rack it, but you leave them and it just, it just looks terrible if you put these, uh, you know, put these, uh, the, you know, this, uh, the balusters and railing, and then you got this big X across it. I think they were black. It doesn't matter. It just, it just looks like crap. So I'm going to try to make my own uh, I got some ideas, and I don't know if it's going to work out, but I also want to do it for free. Because <laughs> I got a I got some uh, scrap left over from, uh, you know, this was uh, just a little too long for one panel, so I ended up buying two panels, and uh, of course putting a post in the middle, so I have extra top rail and bottom rail left over and a bunch of uh, balusters, because I cut two of them, so uh, I, think it's, I think it's just going to be enough to make something here in the middle, so find out. I might have to buy another panel, but I don't think I do, because that's only like 34 inches across, so once I add the uprights, you know, we're down to like, whatever it's going to be, 32, and I have 31 and a half, so it's going to be close, but uh, we'll see what happens. So, I got some ideas, so let me, uh, let me show you what I got for scrap pieces. See if, uh, see if I can make a gate out of this. Alright, so, I had some of this uh, leftover stuff. That's a piece of bottom rail, piece of top rail. I was out behind the, the garage. I have to clean that up a little bit, but and I got a piece of one and a half inch uh, square tube there and some uh, wood, scrap wood and that sheet there is a uh, vinyl sheet, I forgot what I used that for, I think uh, for soffits or something I, I had cut piece, I don't know, but it's uh, that's all vinyl, it's only like uh, a quarter inch thick vinyl so I got some some ideas, I'm going to start throwing some things together but that's what I'm going to start with, it's just all free so if you want to go to Home Depot and buy the gate, you know, like I said you just get the turnbuckle with the threaded rod and, and two uprights or styles or whatever you want to call them for a hundred bucks you still have to buy a panel for 50 to 80 bucks or whatever they cost so I have this scrap stuff I'm going to try my luck at uh, show you my idea is, uh, is going to be this this is um, I think it's an inch and a half I don't know what it is maybe an inch and a quarter it's an uh, inch and a half steel uh, square tubing but and this is a scrap low bar they have but um, this this fits right into here yeah I know it's got some play here, but this is what's going to keep the, the, you know, the gate from being racked. As far as, you know, if I, if, if you just use the hardware included, it's not included, but you have to buy hardware. It's another 20 bucks, but, you know, embolded that to the, to the uprights, this thing is still going to be, a, you know, tweaking back and forth. So I'm going to put this metal in here as reinforcement. And I do have a railing kit left cut. over, so, you know, it's going to come in handy, but these, it's 20 bucks for this kit. Just come with screws or get them somewhere, but so this is the piece I need to go on my piece of metal. So that's why I got to get everything mocked up, and measured first, because I'm gonna uh, either rivet this or bolt it to that steel, and that way, uh, you know, if you ever see how this stuff goes together, you will. But uh, your end cap will go over, like uh, you know, when you th this will be on the. You'll see how this works. It just the steel will be on here, and you know your railings. Yeah, get, so I ripped down, a couple but, pieces of scrap wood there. Um, one of them was prime, but it ain't gonna matter because I'm gonna wrap it in vinyl. Try to anyways. I, I don't know how that's gonna work, but uh, so I got to go outside and get the uh, the actual how tall is that gate, you know, and then uh, chop these off appropriate, and then figure out how I'm gonna dress this in vinyl so it looks like you know two pieces of vinyl. Uh, I mean, it, it will be vinyl, but it's gonna be you know like a veneer trimmed out in it. I don't know how it's gonna look, and I don't know how I'm gonna secure it. I'm hoping glue in that. Uh, vinyl uh, adhesive will do the trick but let's let's keep going here and yeah, basically trim this what I got up. so far so I have these two pieces of wood 
and uh, you know we're not measured the gate so this is the length I need and uh, I'm just going to ice cream sandwich it to uh, two pieces of vinyl on each side yeah and uh, this will be the top and I'll you know I'm going to jet I'm going to make a strip here glue that on make some kind of cap on here glue that on Let's put this uh, this PVC cement came with the uh, you know those top cap rails but I'm assuming even the stuff uh, with an applicator brush for you know a regular PVC pipe is going to do the same thing but I'll try this stuff at first it smells like it that's for sure this stuff's pretty potent I don't know what the setup time is I know that other stuff you don't have much time so hopefully this will do the trick because uh, I don't want some of the stuff together and some of it not. Uh, so what I end up doing is uh, just putting a few dabs of this uh, glue. Uh, the blue stuff did work on the bottom side there, but because it's flat, you know, it's not like uh, it's two pipes you're trying to put together that are tight to fit to begin with, you know, that forms that really, really fit uh, that good bond. But So I'm just going to do it this way. i got another idea. Just put a few dabs. Line everything up. On, uh, use a brad nailer. This way uh, get that depth right and I can nail it into uh, just a slight angle. I don't want to come into your face obviously but just make sure you get the, uh, the depth right. Yeah, basically here's I'm at with this. Uh, so this is all trimmed in, uh, you know, that quarter-inch PVC. The wood's inside there, and uh, because this is quarter-inch PVC, as you can see, uh, a little bit, you know, this uh, dull mark. <clears throat> Got some. Uh, what the hell is that stuff? Some of this crap here. Fast dry, uh, indoor, outdoor, you know, doors, windows, that kind of stuff. I'm going to sand it up. Uh, I already tested the uh, sand and it sands pretty good. It does uh, take away the sheen a little bit, but it's quarter inch, uh, you know. It ain't like I'm going to take the finish off. It's all PVC through and through. So I think that'll work. That'll be uh, my little uh, styles for and uh, well, whatever. Let me show you where I'm at with this. So that's the upright. Those, uh, hold on a second. Those. Uh, brackets that's where they're gonna go yeah and then uh, let's see if I can do this without uh... so basically traditionally with a um, oops I don't know what that says got an X out of there traditionally with a railing you know you just put uh, put these brackets on and then because this is pretty thick stuff you know all you really have to do is uh, you know, for a railing, and then you screw it underneath into the railing. Well, first you put these, uh, where are they? I don't know where they're under. Here's one. You put these guys, you know, you wrap them around. You know, it does, uh, for trim. Yeah. And then you put the screws through there into this. And it's, uh, it's pretty sturdy for a railing. But the railing, you know, doesn't move. It doesn't have a, you know, this is going to be a gate. It's going to be swinging all the time. So I need some more reinforcement. And because, uh, you know, you put this uh, screw through uh, through here and into this this vinyl, even though it's thick, after time, that's going to loosen up. It's going to be, you know, racking back and forth. It's not going to be good. So, like I said, what I've done is made this piece cut the holes appropriate. It's just a one and a half inch uh, steel. Uh, it's actually galvanized, but uh, so then, then what I can do is feed it in, you know, my holes will be lined up and I'll pop rivet. You see I got a hole there, Oop. hole there, hole there. I'll pop rivet this through the center hole here because when this goes over it you know 
as you can see there's a gap there I don't know if you can see there or not so the the pop rivet through here and into this uh, center hole that'll make sure that steel you know it's not going to pull push or whatever and then this will be uh, when I get it all together I'll show you better. one of these days I'm going to get a cool ass rivet gun that doesn't uh, get jammed but there's there's one rivet there um, probably should have used the washer but it's catching good so there's that but you know when it comes to uh, rivet guns shit, my phone's ringing again they always get jammed these manual bastards huh? I mean, I guess a pneumatic one would be better, but for some reason these damn uh, metal ones, no matter what you do, the rivet gets stuck in there. So, these are a long reach, so I got a couple of squeezes for sure. So this next, this next piece of trim is just a, you know, a screw going into, well not into this, but through this, through the uh, metal bracket, and then into this thick stuff. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's just going to stiffen it up even more. Um, these aren't self-tapping screws, but they should be. Uh, they're pointy enough to go right into that vinyl. Uh, we have to get some self tappers. I was going to try these self tappers like this, right? Phillips. But you know, this is probably zinc. I doubt they're steel. And then this quality, you know, tip. Phillips tip from probably Taiwan. You know how that's going to work out just strip automatically so so I've got this magnetic hex well I mean uh, I'm going to use these hex no stripping allowed right put them in this uh, this tool here magnetic I like magnets magnets are cool let's see if this works if this does work, it's going to be better because uh, I'd like all three in the steel, but we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah, that's definitely steel. I think I just tweaked it. Let's try this bottom one first. I thought I cut them shoulders back far enough, but I guess they're just on the cusp there. It's a little sideways, so I'm assuming. Oop, another way, still. Oh yeah. All right. So those are two. Two. Uh, they're definitely into steel, so I like that. And because it's uh, underneath, you know, when this is uh, upright, even though they're zinc, they're not going to rust. Well, even if they do rust, I don't even care. They're into steel. So I like that, so watch. All right, so that's the end result there. Um, come out good, doesn't rack. That's my gate, yeah? A uh, couple of things to note, I, you know, on this corner here, right there, those brackets are flipped. They're supposed to be the other way. Uh, the only reason I flipped them is because as you can see they're kind of flush with the bottom and that's going to line up with the, the existing railing I didn't have uh, you know if you flipped them I wouldn't have nothing to screw into uh, but I, I want everything isometrical I don't want the railing you know the top railing I didn't want to have the top railing be here 
and then the bottom rail ain't be up here because that's just gonna look stupid. So I wanted everything level, uh, but other than that, flipping that thing, unless I said that, you wouldn't know anyways, but uh, the other thing is, I did want to have, uh, you know, when it comes to a vinyl, see how that goes up and down, I wanted them to be able to free flow, and they all do. So there's that. It's a pretty hefty gate. Um, probably thinking, I don't know, 30 pounds? Nah, not even. I mean, it's a good stock gate. Homemade gate, I think it'll last for years. Uh, it is all vinyl, you know. I'm just going to have to clean everything up. And all right, so, let's see what I'm looking at here. It didn't come out too bad. Um, still gotta clean it up a little bit, but it's installed. It works. Uh, it's all level. A couple of drawbacks is these uh, solar lights. They were on before, you know. So now, if this gate is open and the wind grabs it, it's gonna crunch that. So uh, ain't worried about that too much because it's only plastic but they're uh, replaceable. So, the drawback is, uh, it does sag about a, you know, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, uh, about an eighth inch to a quarter inch when you open a gate. Uh, which is okay, it's, it's acceptable, but you know, not this, this is just a thing. You know, so, it works, but, you know, when you go to close it, you have to lift up just a hair because it touches on my, my little detail here. If I didn't have that, it'd probably clear no problem, but see how it just catches, so just a little bit quarter inch, but you know, that's probably gonna get worse with time. So, you know, again, I don't like the uh, zigzag tensioner thing. I, I like it like that. So my thought was how I'm gonna remedy that. I had a couple thoughts, but you know, I could put a, uh, well, there's a couple things I was thinking about doing, but what I'm going to do is right under here, you know, that's the wood style. I'm going to add uh, a galvanized screw up into the wood, like a kickstand. You know, so when it's set in there or where you open it, you know, it'll have, uh, it'll be sitting there so it won't, it won't allow it to sag. I don't think you'll see it. So I did end up putting a kickstand on there and you can't even see it. It's under there. It's adjustable, obviously. I mean, you can barely make it out. It's that little, uh, lag bolt so it does two things number one it's going to stop prevent the thing from sagging as it sits there you know i don't know if it'll sag anyways because i got that steel you know reinforced top bar there there's nothing on the bottom a couple of rivets holding everything together but it did uh when you unlatch it you know it did it did want to fall a little bit and then then that piece hit so even though it was an eighth inch i mean that's a tight fit there so I needed uh, needed it not to fall, but it did fall an eighth of an inch, quarter inch. So, anyways, so when you open the gate, this is all you got, right? Little pressure, and then you just you see how it's going to hold it if the wind blows. So I don't want it to hit that solar light. The solar is to it. So I think that's going to be good. It's kind of like a you know a positive uh, step. And then you close it, no problem. So I think that's going to work out good. Like I said, it's my gate. I'll do what I want. <laughs> it's free. It doesn't cost me anything. So if it works out, I mean, it did cost me, uh, I had to buy the hinges, the, the gate hardware. But other than that, this is just scrap stuff. So this is going to work out good.